Welcome to the Geospatial Frontier Virtual Technology Fair, hosted and created by Project Geospatial and partnered with the American Geographical Society. We're about to have an amazing discussion with the Emerging Space Panel, moderated by Mr. Scott Curry, who is the Senior Executive at the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. His current role at NGA is the Deputy Director of Source Operations, where he performs day-to-day -day tasking operations of the United States government's geospatial satellite constellations and the integration of new geospatial data sources in support of DOD and intelligence community missions. Now I'm going to pass the baton to Scott as he takes off with the introductions and discussion with our panelists. Hey, thanks a lot, uh, Adam. Appreciate it. And thanks so much for setting this up in what I think is going to be a, a, a very interesting uh, panel based on the numbers of the, the variety of companies that we have here to discuss um, their business operations today. Uh, I want to say, first off, that uh, thanks for the intro. I've been interested in uh, new space, as we call it now, uh, for many, many years. I've been working with some foreign partners on their plans for that. Um, and I think the new space mission, by new space, I mean smaller satellites, et cetera, bringing data down to the ground uh, and exploiting it uh, in an automated way so that people aren't uh, focused on extracting all the value manually, right? I think we all agree that, that those days are long gone. And the challenge is to move us forward to where it's kind of running autonomously and, and the data is extracted out of a multitude of these pixel streams or services and, and brought to bear directly where the customer needs it. So that's uh, our focus at NGA. I know that's the focus that uh, the Army, the Navy, and those uh, that I spend a lot of time with in my day-to-day -day experiences at work. And so I think uh, these companies that rep are represented today are all on the path to providing some some value and to move us, push us forward into providing those kind of services on behalf of the government and indeed the, the private sector. So the purpose of the panel today is to kind of give each one of these uh, five companies and their leaders and speakers today the opportunity to kind of provide exposure to what are the emerging uh, space-based technologies and ground-based technologies that are going to make best use of these of these data sources? And how are you know what are they what are they doing to enter the industry? Uh, I want to we want to understand how they are unique or different from some of the established companies that are out there today. In other words, what might separate them from their comp competitors? What kind of partnership arrangements are they making? Or are they trying to do it all themselves? Or have they found partners with other corporations or other entities that are filling some of the gaps where they agree, I can't do everything, right? Um, and then understand what new problems are being faced as, as these technologies bring more and more capacity, more variety of data types and sources into the marketplace, and then uh, bringing that into the government and the private sector's enterprise so they can make best use of those. Um, I can tell you that, you know, as we talk to our customers, uh, we all agree that the, uh, the amount of data that's out there already is, is far too much for us to manually kind of extract value from. We've got to figure out a way to, to, to become more automated, to, to, to have confidence in the algorithms and other things that are extracting the value out of there so we can depend on those and don't have to look at every piece of information ourselves to validate it. That's a cultural transformation that we have to overcome in the, in the government. And I think it's probably similar in the private sector. Um, we're going to talk uh, to a couple of radar constellation providers today, and collectors. Uh, I'll be very interested to see because I don't believe there's a, a high number, a large number of, of private sector uh, radar experts on exploiting that kind of imagery. So I'm interested to hear how, how they're going to do that and use that those systems to provide uh, services to the customer base. Uh, that they can then consume. So uh, the process uh, that we're going to follow today is kind of I'm going to give each each one of the the five companies about no more than five minutes to kind of give an overview of number one who they are, what their company does. As I mentioned, focus on the purpose that, that I described before. What makes them unique? What's their vision? Where are they? Where are they in their business plan uh, to, for today? And what is their plan for the future? Um, so I want to give them a chance to do that. There are questions coming in uh, via chat that Adam is monitoring and sending to me. I have a few questions already as a result of reviewing their uh, videos and their websites already as well. So uh, that's how we're, that's how you as the viewing audience can participate by sending 
questions into Adam and he will do his best to uh, collapse those into into uh, slices that I can consume and then uh, ask back to each of the companies. Okay, so let's move on uh, to Space Eyes. Uh, look at uh, Jaden Baines. Uh, if, if you're on, I'm going to turn it over to you to kind of give us the walk us through the business case and your business plan, where you are, and highlight some of the uniqueness of your capabilities. Uh, and then we'll ask a few questions. Thanks, Scott, and good morning, everybody. I'm uh, Jaden Baines, CEO at SpaceEyes. Uh, our company specializes in addressing challenges in the maritime domain and in obfuscated battle space. This entails geoint collections and analysis with a focus on non-traditional asymmetric threats. Our offerings are unclassified commercial capabilities governed by the U.S. Department of Commerce restrictions. The uniqueness we offer in collections is a low earth orbit radar satellite with an AIS and SAR sensor co-located on the same satellite offering a 400 kilometer swath. To complement the SAR data collection, we offer an analysis capability that integrates over 50 maritime data sources. Our PED process exploitation and dissemination solution includes an export system to understand the maritime normal and build context together with a data science system that uses artificial intelligence with statistical techniques in machine learning, such as hidden Markov models. Context in the domain is becoming ubiquitous between subsurface, surface, and space, leading to data becoming fungible. Our experience over the past two decades, post 9-11, has included maritime domain awareness projects with U.S. coalition partners in Australia, Israel, Chile, India, and Singapore. Most recently, we started collaborating with mission partners in the South China Sea, like the Philippines. So the value we add to the warfighter today is in delivering an unclassified tipping and queuing capability to support tactical ISR, which is intelligence surveillance reconnaissance. At Space Eyes, we recognize that an agile 80% solution now helps address timely information dominance for the warfighter in theater. To succeed, we strongly believe in teaming to fill the missing blocks, as it allows us to articulate the team's collective strength and help the warfighter address a time-sensitive challenge. Over the years, we've worked with prime contractors like Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, General Dynamics, and others on maritime security projects. In recent years, with modern software engineering techniques, we dockerize our containerized application that resides on the Amazon Web Services Cloud. This allows us to address continuous innovation and continuous delivery with complete confidence in the DevSecOps cycle. We have a crater with the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency and separately work with the US Air Force, US Navy, and US Army. So our strength resides in big data analytics in the maritime domain, and that includes geospatial, non-spatial, and unstructured data. We subscribe to raw data from numerous providers and industry aggregators. This allows us to build a contextual model to apply geo end collections against. As the battle space gets more obfuscated by non-state and state actors, it's imperative that the agility is the key discriminator for our warfighter, who will rely on information dominance. We offer an unclassified ISR layer using commercial assets. Like I said, it's an 80% solution, but it's fast to address agility and asymmetric awareness. Recently, we teamed with AT&T to leverage their data pipes and help deliver our unclassified ISR data layer to government programs and systems in the classified realm. We believe the future lies in user subscriptions and delivering insight as a service. I'm pleased to be here today in the company of my esteemed colleagues and some of whom uh, were with us uh, in the space-based ISR cohort at Colorado Springs and some that we collaborated with in delivering tactical ISR. Uh, I would conclude with saying that the future we are building for is not the same that we lived in. 
And we have fantastic opportunities in remote sensing through a transformation in thought. So now that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. I'll be happy to take any questions. No, that's excellent. Thank you, Jayden. Um, I think uh, everyone would agree, certainly on the warfighter community, that an 80% solution now is preferred to trying to get to 100%, you know, five years from now. I think everybody's, uh, they, there's appetite there to demonstrate and test these things uh, in an operational environment or a or an exercise or whatever the case may be. I know on your on your uh, website or in your video, you mentioned RIMPAC 2020 uh, and support to that on the Marisime domain awareness side. Um, I wonder if you could talk about exactly what you're what you're attempting to do as part of that exercise, if you're willing to, sir. Uh, yes, sir. In that particular case, uh, our customer is uh, uh, the U.S. Air Force, and they have a, a program uh, where they're uh, taking multiple satellites for military use. And so the idea is to collect all the uh, uh, imagery and then to create uh, rapid analytics out of it. Uh, the South China Sea, where we focus on, it's obfuscated. Uh, we have had over 15 years of experience in the South China Sea working with the Singapore Navy. So we know South China Sea like the back of our hand. And um, that's where the adversaries are obfuscating the battle space, weaponized fishing boats, et cetera, et cetera. And so the ability to be able to uh, identify these uh, threats and bring it uh, to the commanders and the warfighters uh, quickly uh, is really critical. And so that's uh, what we want to do is uh, support uh, the uh, government entity, uh, which is uh, in the end PACOM, and PACOM is supported by AFRLs and some other folks. Uh, and then uh, it's going to entail a RIMPAC. Now it's been, RIMPAC's been shaved back a bit. Uh, it's down to two weeks exercise at sea. There's nothing, um, you know, on land. And so we'll be supporting uh, our uh, program managers uh, down in Albuquerque and Peterson Air Force Base. Oh, excellent. Yeah, I'm an, I mean, you talked about your value proposition, which one of the questions I had, and I think you mentioned an insight as a service. So I wonder, is that insight as a service, is that pretty much the kind of the, one of the foundations of your of your uh, value proposition is giving people the services and the, the data they need, the answers they need, not necessarily dumping a bunch of data on them? Well, we've got an analytics system and we've got a, a, an API and so uh, there's all kinds of information that customers would want to have. So, uh, for example, they might uh, want to find out where the targets are. And uh, because we have a wide area surveillance, so we would be able to go over, for example, South China Sea with a 400 kilometer swath with an S-band and through inclement weather, we could find targets that uh, would not necessarily be found otherwise because in monsoon season, it's, it rains uh, uh, cats and dogs out there. But at that time, we would be able to immediately uh, uh, task an umbrella light satellite who has x band and say, hey, uh, get us more details on that target. And that information then would be all automatically queued back to the customer. Or for example, we're in conversation with Cleos, we could pick up RF intercepts and we would do that. So it's a combination of many things which uh, involves, uh, like I said, it's teaming now. How do we get that information back? Uh, we're in the, working in the unclassified realm with Cleos and Umbra and other uh, set providers. And we uh, decided to team with at and because they okay. have big data pipes to push it to the government. Okay. I did have a question from the audience. This will be the last question. We're going to be running out of time here shortly. Um, you mentioned 30 data sources. Are all these imagery collectors? Or are you using open source, social media, kind of a conglomeration of a multitude of sources? Well, we're uh, actually over 50 data sources. And what we do is we're getting geospatial, non-spatial, and unstructured. So I'll give you a very uh, interesting example about unstructured. A lot of bad things that happen in the maritime domain, they don't get reported into databases, but they end up as stories in, in articles. So some ship was doing illegal oil transfer outside uh, Surabaya, Indonesia. It gets into no database. But what happens is it ends up as a local story. So what we do is we call the internet, we pick up these stories, we take unstructured data, we put it together with what we're collecting from the non-spatial data sources like IHS Market and many others. We also bring in other uh, 
uh, sources of data, like we get the treasury sanctions from treasury department, all the ships under sanctions. All of this goes into an analytics engine. We create the context, we tie it in with the geospatial collections, and then we provide the results back to the war fighters. That's super. Yeah, so you answered my question. There's certainly a lot of open source, social media kinds of things and uh, and international media reporting and, and that kind of thing. So, um, Jane, thank you so much for being on here with the fan today. A lot of exciting things that you guys are working on um, to provide these kinds of solutions or insight as a service. So thanks again.